One of the things we came across was that a, a horn that had a DI of about eight tended to sound pretty good. And then we took it further and said 9060. A horn that's 9060 sounds good. And uh, well, then I came up with the speaker that they wanted a round horn in. And um, I asked them, you know, what coverage pattern you're looking for? And they said, how about 80 or 90 or something like that? Well, one, one of the things I began to see in horns that the directivity index was going down it was that right before cutoff, right before the horn loses coverage control, it would beam and then lose control. So how do we fix it? One day I was watching my little boy blow bubbles. And um, as he was blowing the bubbles, you know, he's really trying to control it to make a nice round bubble. And I, I saw the bubble just leave his wand and collapse and close and capture air and float off. And I thought, we're not, we're, we're not treating the bubble right. So I went fishing the next day and the idea of the bubble stuck in me. And um, I started thinking about how do I treat the bubble so that it doesn't wrap on itself because that's what's happening. The walls are pulling away from the bubble faster than what the bubble wants to expand. If you look at a cone radiator or a dome radiator, it has a natural coverage pattern that it wants to be at and it's about 70 to 90 degrees. Um, it actually has three steps. It's very wide, controlled directivity, and then beams. And where it has the controlled directivity, it has, or the control coverage, it has a, it can vary depending on the geometry and stuff, but typically between 70 and, and, and 90 degrees. And I begin to think, well, if we're pulling the horn walls further away than what the wave naturally wants to expand it, that's maximum already, then, then we're already contorting the wave and expecting for it to hold at, uh, let's say, 100 degrees. So I, so I thought, how do I make the horn, how do I make the wave stick to the horn walls without disturbing it too much? So everything's a compromise and still have the coverage patterns that we're looking for. And I thought, you know, if I put some sort of gray surface on somewhere on the horn, would that help? So the next morning or on Monday morning, I come in and I, I grabbed um, just any horn and I literally got some modeling clay and just put it in the corner, ran polders on it and I went, damn. So then I feathered it some more and I went, wow, this stuff works. So, I began to, I designed some really wide coverage horns and I started to place those geometric shapes in the corner. And I, there's a couple of things that I began to realize and that is that, that, that it should not be something that is af, that's an afterthought that you just place on a horn. What it should be is that as a DI goes back up, that the requirement for having these geometric shapes should go away. Because after you get to a DI that is at or higher than a dome wants to radiate anyway, then you should be able to control the wave. It gives us the ability to have a very wide horn and have the coverage pattern remain constant till it loses control. So it doesn't beam.